So you want proof? You want proof that the ancient Israelites, the Hebrews, the Israelites, you know, like of the Bible, the biblical Israelites and Hebrews were African, what we call African today. You know, Africa is like a pseudonym, modern pseudonym, but we know what we mean when we say someone African, right? So the ancient Israelites is what you and people call today, right? Just to keep it so-called politically correct as Africans. So the ancient Israelites were African people. Now, there's a lot of different ways that different ones prove, show and prove this and bring forth evidence. And a lot of people debate. They say, no, the Israelites, you know, are, they'll say Semitic people. And then they'll say that they're trying to make you believe that the Semitic people were not black people. You know, and they say those are the Semites and they'll say Hamites because they play this so-called Ham, Shem and Japheth game. You know, like as though you're illiterate. But if you read, it's actually Shem, Ham and Japheth. But here's my number one proof right here. You know, let's just share this right here. Number one proof that the biblical Israelites, the ancient Israelites were. And we can say are, but first let's just prove the past were. African people. How, how can we prove this? Need we use visual, you know, iconography, ancient art, you know? What sort of proof shall we use? Well, how do we know anything about the Hebrews and Israelites? We, we know it because they say the Bible, right? That's what's written in the Bible, what's written in the scripts and the scripture, yeah? But those scriptures that we have written, especially in the Western Gentile world, they were what translated, right? They were translated from ancient scriptures right they say like in hebrew like the king james bible the king james bible they say well that they come from hebrew you know but it's translated from hebrew right and then the people of the book are known as hebrews so there's a, a lot of archaeological proof that proves it you know but then people can debate you know especially if we just look at so-called um um physical or outer features, you know, and that's kind of getting into the inferiority, you know, that poses as supremacy, you know, but we don't like to even say so-called, quote, so-called white supremacy because we don't want to enforce or, 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 or speak a lie or encourage, you know, deception. So they call it white supremacy, but we don't want to go there and just look at so-called just skin color. We can, of course, we can use that because Africans tend to have a particular, you know, particular traits, right, that distinguishes them, right, this root race people from all the other peoples on the face of the earth. So we could go there, but, you know, people will debate that. I'm going to bring to you and show to you and share with you one of the basic proofs that a lot of folks, I think the majority of people that try to debate this subject matter, when we say that the ancient Israelites, the biblical Israelites, let's say it like this, the biblical Israelites, the Israelites of the so-called Bible. We're going to go from low degrees to high degrees, you know, from the so-called translation to the origination were, right? African people. <laughs> you say, well, well how, how are you going to prove that they were African people? I know people say, ah, oh, you can't prove this. Yes, we can. The proof already been in our faces and in our ears. We've been hearing it, but some people don't even know the significance of it. I, I'm not even saying it just yet. You know, I'm not going to say it just yet until first I just show some of the, you know, other proofs. You know, other proofs positive. Let's just scroll through some of this. Other proof positive concerning who's who. You know what I mean? Who's who in the zoo? Who's who in the Bible? You know, we can go to this right here. You know, we're going to we're gonna address this racism, you know, here. But, you know, I said the racism, you know, is how they try to misrepresent the historical art and facts, you know, with their play in their color game. But still, this is still further proof as well, right? That the people of the book known as the Bible were African, African people. <laughs> All right. So here, 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 let's, let's get it just through here. Just want to show and prove some, you know, art and facts right here. You know, there's various art and facts we can go to, but here's the big proof. Let's, um, let's, let, Let's map it out, right? We talk about this continent that's known as Africa, 
right? This continent that's known as Africa, right? Kind of interesting, you know? We put this forward, our people, the ones lost now found over here, and now those who are in the state of Israel are putting this forward. Looking familiar, right? <laughs> Looks similar, right? Now, this here says that this is the Yehudi, right? The Yehudim, the Judeans or the Judahites known in the translations as Jews, we the black Jews fleeing into the wilderness that becomes known as Africa, right? From the Roman murderers, right? In 70 AD, right? Means that many sub-Saharan Africans are direct descendants, right? From Yisrael, from Israel and, and, and the Judeans, the Yehudi. Right by blood, right by bloodline, right now that's that should be a proof right there, you know, looking at that historical proof right there, but for some, they say that's not good enough, right that's not good enough. well, let's just go here for a moment. We'll return to the suitcase just in a moment momentarily, because I said, what shall I use to prove that the biblical Israelites were African people what you know, what, what, <laughs> right? Before it was named Africa, you know, before, it, this is grace here, before it was named Africa. Now they say that, well, this is ham. Now you listen to the white man too much, but it, you're not really listening to him. You know, you're not listening to what he says, but he doesn't say, you know what I mean? You're listening to what he wants to make you believe, right? Before it was called Africa, some say it was called the land of Ham. Mm, yeah, the Hamites were there, but that's if you believe that the only black man, according to the biblical narrative, was Ham. See, that's the first lie right there. You believe that Ham was, Ham was not, or Ham was not the first black man, according to the Bible, approaching this from a biblical perspective based on what is written. So how do we know about the Hebrews? How do we know about the Israelites? We know about the Hebrews and the Israelites chiefly and mainly, right, from the Bible. I think this is an interesting right here. You see what it says, land of Ham, right? Let's zoom down here when we look at the linguistics. You see what it says right there? Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Asiatic. Now, when we hear Asiatic, we're looking at the Asiatic black man, you know, the black man of Asia, the ancient black man of Asia, right? Do we have proof of that? Well, of course we have proof of that, right? Listen, it's how is this not part of Africa, right, when this is? <laughs> See, because it all depends on, 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 on who you want to believe, you know, or based on what they make you believe, right? For thousands of years before so-called European or white inferiority posing as supremacy geography, Arabia, get this, Arabia was part of Africa, right? Arabia was part of Africa. But here, 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 let's touch on this right here. We're going to look at it linguistically, linguistically. You know, so the linguistic approach is what is we're going to use to prove, right, to show and prove that the biblical Israelites were African people, right? We can look at many of their descendants today, right, both at home, you know, in the East and those of us scattered abroad, right? We can use that as proof as well. But here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go to our, where's our download photo, all right? So first things first, right here, 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 all right? Let's go, with, let's go about it this way right here. Let's look at this right here. You see what it says? Proto-Afro-Asiatic, right? Remigration to Africa, Proto-Chadic, they say Proto-Egyptian, Proto-Omotic, right? Proto-Cushitic. Proto Berber, and you see over here, Proto Semitic, right? Let's go over here, Proto Afro Asiatic, right? Well, the proof that the biblical Israelites are 
right? Or let, let, let's let's first point to the past and we'll bring it forward to today. Were what we call today African people is the language the linguistic, is the Bible, but it's the Bible. What language was the scriptures written in? They say Hebrew, right? And Hebrew is classified as what sort of a language? Hebrew is classified as what sort of a language? As an Afro-Asiatic, right? Or Afro-Semitic. Do you want further proof? Should we present further proof of this? Right? Should we present further proof of this? Well, further proof of this shall be presented. Right? Just using this, we can zoom in on these things here. These are just some points of reference that are very important to refer to right here. So we have the Afro-Asiatic family. Get into the linguistics, the breakdown. Afro-Asiatic family. This is what many call it today. Right? This is one of the ways they refer to the language of the people of the book. The Bible. Right? The Hebrew. Right? And even... If we would include the Aramaic, we still have an Afro-Semitic, right? An Afro-Semitic language. So here, let's go to our research right here. Keep this as a short video. Hopefully we can follow up more on this. But the proof right here, right, that the biblical Hebrews and Israelites were African people. The proof of it is the language. Hebrew is classified as what sort of a language? As a Afro-Semitic language. But they like to run the game on you. They just say Semitic, Hebrew, Semitic, Semitic, Hebrew, Semitic language. But then if you go and look up it from an academic and a scholarly perspective, those who really dig in and research this, right, and classify it based on the evidence, Hebrew is a Afro-Semitic language. So look what we looked up. We looked up Afro-Semitic. You did the Google. Just you can Google this. Got the Wikipedia page right here. Afro-Asiatic languages. Pause. What is it called? So Afro-Semitic, right? Afro-Semitic. This is those researchers say researching along the lines of the scriptures, the Bible. They would refer to as Afro-Semitic, but nowadays they use the term Afro-Asiatic. Remember, we showed you the meme just earlier that for thousands of years before the so-called European on the white man started making his maps, that Arabia was part of what was called Arabia. What's called Arabia was part of what's called Africa, right? What's called Arabia was part of what's called today Africa. But note this right here. When you look up Afro-Semitic, this is the first thing that comes up. Afro-Asiatic languages. Let's read for a moment. It says the Afro-Asiatic languages or Afro-Asiatic also known as, keyword, keyword, also known as. For my research, they refer to it as Afro-Semitic. That's the older terminology. It seems as though the newer terminology or related terminology is Afro-Asiatic, right? But whether you want to say Afro-Semitic, Afro-Semitic, or you want to say Afro-Asiatic, one thing you are saying is Afro, 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 Afro. Uh, did we miss that? Black is beautiful. What were the brothers and sisters wearing? Afro. Isn't that black? Isn't that black? So the language of the Bible is Afro-Semitic, you say? Is Afro-Asiatic? Then you want to question when we say, well, we are Israel, we are Beit Israel, we are Hebrew, we are Israelites. How dare you question? What's the proof of it? The proof of it is that it's Afro. This means that Hebrew correctly is an African language, an Afro-Semitic language. Let's look at the definition right here. Wikipedia, for example, the Afro-Asiatic languages or Afro-Asiatic, depends on if they, how they hyphenize it, right? Also known as Hamito, Ham, what, what? Ham. They say Ham, Shem, and Jaff, Ham. 
Notice, hamito, which one is first? Ham. <laughs> you note know that? Which one is first? Ham. Hamito Semitic. Wait, 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 wait. Hamito Semitic? Or some prefer to put the Semitic first, right? Semito Hamitic. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. They told you about Ham, Shem, and John. They told you their version, their perversion, right? Their misreading of the Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Once they say Ham, Shem, and Japheth, you know they're not really referring to the source text. If we refer to the source text, it is Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But the language is Hebrew, and that language is Afro. It's Afro. That means that's, that, that's the African part right there. And notice which part is first. Afro-Semitic. What part is first? Afro. Afro-Asiatic. What part is first? Afro. Right? And they say, and sometimes also as Afro-Asian. Afro-Asian. That's interesting because black people, black men in Americas during the time of Rastafari, the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, the 20s and into the 30s, we refer to ourselves. This is little known, but it's very important for us to consider it even today as Afro-Americans, as Afro-American. As you see, it says Afro-Asian, Afro-Americans, Afro-Asian. So it should not be any coincidence that we have such teaching within our community, diaspora community of the Asiatic black man. Asiatic black man, the black man of Asia. People say, well, look in Asia today, you see differences over there in that region of the world. Well, look at America. If you were to come to America, go in a time machine a thousand years ago, you would not find Tom, Dick, and Harry from England in America a thousand years ago. You follow my point. You're, if you went to Australia, in fact, a thousand years ago, you would still be able to encounter the Tasmanian people before they were massacred and genocided. Genocide is a genocide. And that word was coined by they translating an Afro-Semitic speaker the king of kings, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, when he spoke in Amharic and Afro-Shemitic, Afro-Asiatic language, they translated what he said. And then because of that, they coined the word genocide, killing a seed, right? Suicide, genocide, it's a, yeah. So you see what it says, sometimes also as Afro-Asian are a language family of about, you want more? Let's go into a little bit more right here, right? So here we go right here. Here, we, here they got it in the bowl. Here they got it in the bowl relief. Afro-Asiatic. So have I proven that the Israelites, if if the Israelites spoke, if all we know about, if not all we know, but the main thing that we know, the main, the main um, 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 witness, right? We could say the main witness of the, ancient is the ancient hebrews and the biblical israelites of the ancient hebrews and the biblical israelites the ear earliest and the most reference witness point of reference is what because we always say well 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 there's the bible you know and the, and the scriptures you know but but where is the all the other evidence that's what people like to say right you know so the point of the point of of, of, of focus should be on the Bible because that's how we know about the Israelites because of the Bible, right? Now, of course, we have it in all these translations, but even these translations, many of them will tell you that, that this was translated out of, you know, the original languages. And when we're talking about the Old Testament, the foundation, right, of the Bible, we have Hebrew. And Hebrew is a Afro-Semitic, Afro-Asiatic language. Afro-Asiatic, also known as Hemito-Semitic. Now, Hemito-Semitic is like another way, a clever way of saying Afro-Semitic. And then they flip it and say Semito-Hemitic. And sometimes also as Afro-Asian are a language family of about 300 languages. 
that are spoken predominantly, not only, but predominantly in the geographic sub-regions, sub-regions of Western, not Eastern, but Western Asia, North Africa, the Horn of Africa, I like to call it the Horn of Ethiopia, but the Horn of Africa and parts of the Sahara, the Sahel, with the exception of its Semitic branch. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. Semitic branch, that means from the Afro-Semitic, there is a branch. So that it's like pointing the origin to the Afro part. You, you get me? With the exception of its Semitic branch, all branches of the Afro-Asiatic family are exclusively native to the African continent. You see how they, you, you see that slick shit? <laughs> you, you see that slick stuff right there? With the exception of its Semitic branch, because they know that Hebrew Right? They can't avoid it. In fact, modern Hebrew and, and a lot of the stuff that you see, the other, you know, the other J words, you know, other Jews doing is a lot of it is based on, you know, the, the ability to have the modern Hebrew is because they did a lot of studies on the Ethiopic and Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic land. This is all proven. We, you know, this is this is what we study. This is our research. This is our lane. You know, with the exception of its Semitic branch, all branches of the Afro-Asiatic family are exclusively native to the African continent. But remember that Africa and Asia, from our ancestors, the pre-so-called pseudo-white supremacy, European, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant perspective, included, the ancient world included Asia and Africa. But the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant European, they come with the, the ancient Roman thing, divide and conquer. <laughs> you get me? So it says Afro-Asiatic languages have over 500 million native speakers, right? 500 million native speakers. Now, the slick thing is, let's see how deeply they try to hide the Hebrew. Let's see how deeply they try to hide the Hebrew. Watch. Let's read. Afro-Asiatic languages have over 500 million native speakers, which is the fourth largest number of native speakers of any lang of language family. After Indo-European, Sino-Tibetan, Niger-Congo. So there is... Now, now, now let's check out these language family groups, right? There's Afro-Asiatic, they say it's the fourth largest number of native speakers of any language family after the Indo-European, right? Indo-European, right? So that means Hebrew is not Indo-European. It's Afro-Semitic, right? It's not Hindu-European. It's not Sino, right? Tibetan, right? Sino, linking with the China scene, you know, like the Sinai scene. That's the link of the Chinese, even in the Bible, Sino. Shino, Shina, uh, Niger, Congo. Now, Niger, Congo is, is on the African continent, but that's another language family. Check, check. The Philom has six branches, Berber, Chadic, Cushitic, Egyptian, Semitic, Omotic. Now, Omotic, you know, take note, brothers, and sisters, especially those who want to study like ancient um, Smatawi, Smatawi, or what they call um, um, Egypt, ancient Egypt, you know what I mean? The study of the two lands. But notice, so the phylum has six branches. What's the six branches? Berber, Chadic, Cushitic, Egyptian, Semitic, Omotic. The most widely spoken modern Afro-Asiatic language or dialect continuum. Now, this is interesting. Take note. We have th such a thing called a dialect continuum. So there's the language, this language, and then there are dialects of that language. And there's also what is known as a dialect continuum. So the most widely spoken modern Afro-Asiatic language or dialect continuum by far is Arabic, a de facto group, 
<laughs> it like like because it's, it's it exists, it's, it's a fact. You know what I mean? Not not law, the juror, but the facto group of distinct language varieties within the Semitic branch. And this is true of Arabic. There is a lot of dialectic. You know, the dialectic continuum is very very interesting. You know, like we have um, some brethren I know from Yemen. You know. And we be speaking, you know, and, and, and dialoguing about this, that, you know, like, like Arabic, the dialect in Yemen is different than in, 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 in Cairo, you know, different than in Egypt, you know, as well as different than the, what's spoken even in Saudi, you know what I mean? And then what's spoken in other places, you know, so it's very important to kind of understand. It's like. I compare it for ones who might not be familiar, like with Spanish or with languages that that link with, you know, Spanish, you know, like how you have Spanish and then you have Portuguese, Portuguese, but then you have Spanish and like Spain, Spanish is different than what many ones who are referred to as Hispanic. So the Hispanic speakers, they're speaking a dialect continuum, but it's a different dialect and it's it, it kind of descends from, but then it becomes Creole in, you know, different places. But we have this going on. Now, the languages that evolved from Proto-Arabic have around 313 million native speakers concentrated primarily in the Middle East and North Africa. Think about it. They have 313 million they want to tell us by the ones lost now found beta Israel about birth control. Think about it for a moment. How, how do you got so many people? You know, they said, well, the Arabs and Islam and this and that, they are forced to be reckoned with. Well, of course. You know what I mean? The most vital resource of any nation is its people. People, people. A little bit more right here. Let's scroll down. So they go right here. They scroll down. Now, remember, we were looking up. What we looked up was... Afro-Semitic. But instead of them giving us Afro-Semitic, they say, oh, you're looking for this? Take that. You're looking for this? Take that. <laughs> so here, in addition to the languages spoken today, Afro-Asiatic includes many ancient languages. Remember we said the ancient Hebrews and the biblical Israelites. All right? Check the word sound. All right? Ancient Hebrews... And the biblical Israelites, that means the Israelites of the Bible, right? The primary source or resource or point of reference to the Hebrews and Israelites by far is the Bible. And the Bible, right, as written in the people, right, they spoke the language that is considered an Afro-Semitic language, and this is Hebrew. Now, here in our brief... Um, presentation right here it says in addition to the languages spoken today afro-asiatic includes many many what ancient languages not just many languages but we're talking about ancient languages and we can add, and we can add to this right here not just ancient languages but just for to clear clarify for you know our purposes here in our presentation ancient biblical languages right right such as egyptian you know there's actually a lot that, not a lot lot but there are some <laughs> ro in kemet words metu net or there's some there's egyptian smai we words that says such as egyptian which forms a distinct branch of the family Notice what it said about Egyptian. When we say Egyptian, we're not talking about modern Arabic, in modern, modern, modern Arab so-called Egypt. No, we're not talking about Greco-Roman descendant modern Arab Egypt. We're not talking about that. Pale red Arab Egypt. We're not talking about that. We're talking about ancient. You know, when people talk about the 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 Rain or Roin Kemet, you know, or the Metu Neta, the Metu Neta, you know, that's what we're speaking about. And they're saying that this that forms a distinct a distinct branch of the family. And within the Semitic family, 
You see this part right here? Within the what? Let's zoom in on this right here. This is the part that we're zooming in on right here. Right here. Afro-Asiatic includes many ancient languages. Right? So, and notice, afro Semitic. Now, they might try to change it up now that y'all are getting this truth. They try to say, well, no, no, it's not Afro-Semitic. It's semito afro dick <laughs> They do that. They do that. It all depends. You see what I'm saying? It all depends on you, my people. You know what I mean? You know, the most vital resource of any nation is its people. And within the Semitic family, Akkadian, Hebrew and heal up to um to Ras Tahaka. Got to heal up, brother Ras Tahaka. You know we be getting into some of these interesting areas. You know of um our linguistic studies. You know and it'd be you know good if more of us can recognize the importance. It says in the beginning was the word. We say word, sound, and power, but word comes before sound. So within the Semitic family, Akkadian, Hebrew, you see Hebrew right there? Phoenician, other Canaanite languages, Amorite, Ugaritic, and Aramaic. It's kind of interesting how they put this in a, you know, like, it's, it's almost in a, a, a very interesting order, right? The Akkadian languages, you know, but notice what they say, that though this is a Semitic my, this is a part of the Semitic branch. The Semitic branch is connected to the Afro-Semitic or the Afro root. Have you checked that right there? You, you have to check that. While there is no consensus among historical linguists, right, historical linguists concerning the original homeland <laughs> of the Afro-Asiatic family or the period when the parent language, which they call proto, like that first Afro-Asiatic um, was spoken. But most agree that it was located within a region of Northeast Africa. That means the Horn of Africa. That means that what is called today Ethiopia, right? That region, the Horn of Africa and Ethiopia region, is at the heart of it. I mean, just think about all the different peoples, right? Some people who are manifestly, you could say, according to their culture, tradition, and their own admittance, they are Cushitic. They are, you could say, of the Hamitic stock, like, say, the Oromos and others. And then you have others, right, who have some links or even claims to Shemitic, but then you have these peoples, these different peoples all dwelling for thousands of years, Right in a you know contiguous uh, region, right, and also mating with each other, and then we have forms of the language like say Amharic, right, which like Hebrew, right, presents an ancient form of what we can call a Creole. You know when two or more languages kind of blend to form something very very unique. This is what it says from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. My, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. Let's do this right here. Um, from beyond the rivers, my, beyond the rivers. Let's put this here. Beyond my, let's say the rivers. I think, okay, let's go back here. You can see that, yeah, it broke off right there. Beyond the rivers. Here we go right here. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, like worshippers, right? Even the daughter, the bat, bait, bait, yes, beta is Israel. The beta Israel, when you say bait is house, but bat is daughter. Bat, right? Or as they anglicize it, bath, but it is bat, is daughter, right? Even the daughter of my dispersed. Who's the daughter of my dispersed? That's we over here, right? The beta Israel, the Falasha, right? The Falasha over here, I and I in exile here in the Americas and the Caribbean from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia pointing to I and I people, we could say at home, right? And my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, I and I abroad, it says, shall bring mine offering. Why is this verse significant? Because Zephaniah 2, 
chapter three, verse um, chapter three, verse ten, right, is really the fulfillment of Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine, which often is pointing to, "For then will I turn to the people a pure language." The pure language is not the first language, right? Ones make the mistake when we spoke about even the the kings of kings language that royal Amharic and we referred to that link of Ethiopia here as we have in verse 10 with that region notice how this is also supported right by the linguistic science and the evidence right the real world evidence that goes back for thousands of years right so they're trying to say well where was the home of this proto-Afro-Asiatic or proto-Afro-Shemitic. You see what I'm saying? See, see, they don't like to use the word Shemitic, but you saw in the notes where they said, in the Wikipedia notes, they say Hamito. So when we say Afro-Shemitic, it could be said Hamo or Kamo, Kamo. Many of us have even coined that there, Kamo Shemitic, right? That Kamo Shemitic. And right there, that blows the 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 racist you know um pseudo white supremacist white anglo-saxon protestant counterfeit christian ham shem and japheth lie right out of the waters that blow is it right out of the waters the reality so the they say that the language is this it's a combination of they say hamido semitic they say uh, afro semitic right so the afro equals ham and ham equals calm or what well, when they say commit you see the link? But these people, they created a linguistic, right, as well as a wealth of, you could say, archives from the biblical perspective, yeah, right? But yet, we're made to believe that African people have nothing to do with it, but the language is described accurately as Afro and even Hamito. So if Hamito Semitic is a language that obviously combines the Hamitic right influence and the Semitic influence, how could these people be like the racist cracker try to make us believe, right, with their how to make a slave and the curse, curse of Ham lie and all their lies? You know about Ham was the black man and she, one was white, one was black, one was white, and the other one was gray. You see, they try to make Shem gray because the truth of the matter is that Shem is black. And we already proven that as well, even getting into the Sephora and getting into some of the ancient Judaic writings even speaks about how Shem is black. Shem is black. Speaking about when we spell Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Shem is black. But they made you believe, right, that the first black man was Ham. <laughs> For then will I turn to the people a pure, a refined language, a purified, a purated, a pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahuwah, the name of Egeziah, the name of the Stainer, the name of Jehovah to serve him with one consent from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia or Cush, if you please, Cush, Cush. So in that same region that according to the Hebrew scriptures known as Cush, and later we get the identification with Ethiopia has both the Hamitic, Cushitic, and the Shemitic, and have had it this influence there in that region for so many thousands of years. Some scholars trace it back to like going back like to 10,000 BC, going way back. And here's the thing: that there's a language, right? There are linguistics and language. Right, that have been formed that displays a union of these two people as one people. But see, they play this divide and conquer. Yeah, Ham was the first black man, and there's the curse of Ham. They lie, lie, lie. There's no curse of Ham in the Bible. There's not. There's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, there are curses and even consequences on Israel because of our people's disobedience, but there's not a curse of Ham in the Bible. They lied to you. 
right? They lied to you, you know? So there's no consensus. That's what it's saying right here. There's no consensus, but what they have agreed upon, because the evidence is so overwhelming, when we look at Northeast Africa, right? The Horn of Africa, you know, that Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, getting to Rwanda, the very root of it. And then we also have the Sudan, right? And then as the river goes down the Nile, we have the Tawi region or ancient Mitzrayim. But then if we go even to the south, there's that influence as well, right? But the Horn of Africa, Northeast Africa, proposed specific locations include the Horn of Africa, some say it began at the Horn of Africa in the highlands of what's known as Tobia or Ethiopia, right, today, right? Some say, no, it was down the Nile. It's only when they went down the Nile, right, to what's the Tawi or Egypt or Kemet. Others say that it was the Eastern Sahara. Some point to its origins in the Eastern Sahara. And others point to the Levant. Now, when you see the Levant right there, Levant is what... When people talk about Palestine, or they talk about the land of Canaan, or the state of Israel, that particular region over there is the Levant. So there are these four different locations that are often debated about where the original, right, proto-Afro-Asiatic. So what it's saying is this, if Afro-Asiatic is a way of saying Afro-Shemitic, and we've proven that, right? The way of saying Afro-Shemitic, right? And then the Bible, the Torah, but the, you know, as one's know with the Bible, right? In Genesis says that Noah had these three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? So we have Ham, Hamito, Kam, Kamo, Kemitic, right? And that links with the Afro part. Then we have Shem, that links with the Semitic part, right? So it's like these two brothers or their descendants, right, were very, very close. Must have been very, very close. They must have been so close, right, that they basically spoke the same language. <laughs> or we can say that if they spoke different languages, they came together, right, and formed this one language that became like a mother and a father, Right, for so many other languages, as we on this page, Afro Asiatic language, you go into more detail for yourself right there. But here they're asking and they're trying to find out well, what was the proto? What was the first? Like before, it's almost like saying from looking at the Bible, right, the Torah, it's like saying Afro Asiatic, Ham and Shem. What language were they speaking before Ham and Shem's descendants? Right, form this language. What, what was the language before? Because the curious thing is, if there is language of the Hamitic people, language of the Shemitic people, language of the Japhetic people, but here's the thing we know that the Hamitic people and then the Shemitic people, or the Afro people, the African people, and the Shemitic people, both of them being black, right? And also Japheth is black too. I know, I know, I know the truth is an offense, <laughs> but it's not a sin. And we can prove that as well, right? When people say, well, what happened? Where did all the races come from? You know about that mitochondrial DNA, right? You do know about that, right? You know that 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 Eve, the real Eve, right? That primordial, that proto, right? Black womb man, so to speak. Or we say that proto African womb man, so to speak. But here, 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 this is this is where we're gonna go with this right here because there's a little bit more here when we get into the name, you know, this name. In current scholarship, the most common names used for the family are Afro-Asiatic or Afro-Asiatic in the current scholarship. In previous scholarship, it used to be Afro-Semitic or Afro-Semitic. Many of us prefer the Afro-Semitic, but be that as it may, in current scholarship, that's nowadays, you know, in this 21st century scholarship, the most common names used for the family are Afro, for the what? For the what? For the family. So you see what they tried to do? You remember how the scripture talks about one of the things that, that the Almighty really hates is those who, 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 who make war 
or trying to divide brother against brother. You know, brother on brother killing, causing brother to fight against brother, right? So that means that the Afrawada, Hamito, the Ham, African, and the Shemitic, right, or the Shem people, all this kind of curse of Ham, lie, all of that, you recognize? First of all, it's a lie. There's no verse in the Bible that says, curse be Ham. Right? I'm talking about the man, Kam, Kham. You know what I mean? You know? But actually, it was Curse Be Canaan. Now, that has a lot to do with the latter day Europeans. Right? This is why they tried to make even the Canaanite the originator of the linguistics. That's one of these, these kind of theories they're trying to push now, right? In the linguistic circles regarding, you know, languages and ancient languages, right? But also it's known as Hamito-Shemitic. Some prefer Semito-Hamitic, with the latter two having fallen out of favor in English. You know why the latter two falls out of favor? Hamito-Semitic and Semito-Hamitic? Because when anyone looks at or hears it, they immediately like Ham, Sam, you mean Shem, right? Ham and Shem. And they begin to think, well, if Ham and Shem were together, that they had a language, then how is this that they try to counterfeit the Bible, counterfeit Christianity, and even counterfeit Judaism, right? Tries to use that racist innuendo against African and black people, right? Because they are seeking an, to take an identity that actually, as we have proven here and elsewhere, but especially here, with the basic one quintessential proof. If the thing we know about the ancient Israelites, the people of the book, is the book, and the book was written in the Hebrew and the ancient Hebrew language, and the Hebrew and even Aramaic is Afro-Shemitic or Afro-Semitic, aka Afro-Asiatic, then that means Afro and Africans have something, something to do with it. Now, the big thing is going to be, once one's recognized how true this is, the question will be, well, what do they have to do with this? And we will answer and say, er everything, everything, right? Everything to do with the half of the story that has not been told till now, 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 right? So those two terms, hemido semitic semido hemitic right? They fell out of favor, right? In English, but still seeing frequent usage in other languages, such as German. Note what they say here. In English, the scholars don't use these terminologies. But in other languages, when the scholars are doing their linguistic studies, they don't have a problem with saying hemito semitic You know, to say kemito, kemitic, semitic, kemitic, semitic, kemito, semitic. They don't have a problem saying that. But you know why they have a problem saying that in English, right? Because what they did to the lost sheep of the house of Israel in the Americas and the Caribbean. Other proposed names which have not found widespread acceptance among the linguistic community is Erythrak. Er Erythrak. Like to say Eritrean. Eritrean. Basically Erythrak, right, is linked to Eritrean. They, they have Lysramic, Nohitic. Look what's here, Nohitic. And Lamekite, Lamekite. <laughs> but you notice one thing about all those particular terminologies? They have some reference to the Bible and to Africa, as in Afro Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? Right here, here, here. There's, there's some more on this. We don't want to really go outside. You know, we don't really want to go too far outside of the proof right here that the the ancient Hebrews and the biblical Israelites were African people. The proof, right? The proof right here. But this next paragraph or two is also very, very interesting. I really advise ones that catch this to save this particular page right here. Please save these things like PDF it, you know, back it up. You know, put it on a terabyte or something like that. You know, get a Faraday cage or a Faraday bag to put your stuff in. You know what I'm saying? Got to keep that knowledge and information going on to the babies, you know, to the next generation. And this is where we kind of segued into this right here briefly.
but sought to give a little more contextualization to it. So all that is to say, right, that the people of the Bible, the biblical Hebrews and Israelites are African people because the very language here on this chart, they say 15,000, right, to 9,000 BCE, right? Interesting there, the re-migration into Africa. In other words, before, right, the flood, right? And then the re-migration into Africa after the, the deluge, right, of the earth, of the land, or the lands in that particular region over there. Right, so here, 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 this is the main proof of it. The proof of it is the people, is the language. The language proves it all, right? The, the Hebrew language proves, right? The Hebrew language proves that the Israelites are, right? Or were, were, right? <laughs> they still are, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on nowadays, you know, but were African people, as we use the term, African today. You see what it says, the, the blue part? Notice what it says right there, the blue part is Afro-Asiatic, right? This is how some of the maps put, but then they cut off, they kind of cut off, right? They cut off Arabia there. But if you do your studies, you'll find other maps like this one right here that really points to that Ling, Aramaic and Hebrew there, Semitic dispersals. We get down here to Tigra, the, you know, Tigra, the Gutters, Tigrinya, Amharic, Argoba, Gafat, Soto. We have Western, the Western, the Gorage, right? Ogaden, the, there's the Ogaden Arabic. Remember the whole um, dialect continuum, right? You have Harari, and then also there's the Eastern. You see what it says, the Eastern Gorage. So when we talk about what I basically bring this these are the I and I reasonings and even some theories based on the evidence and facts that we present about there being the Western Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic, and then the Eastern, as Aramaic is more of an Eastern and the Biblical Hebrew is more of a Western. And Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic in the same way that Amharic is Afro-Shemitic. Remember, Ethiopia turned to the people a what? a pure, a refined language, right? There, there, there. This kind of goes into, and we're looking at both all these languages that we have here in the Ethiopian Horn of Africa region, right? Are both Semitic languages, languages that are, you could say, purely Semitic, languages that are purely Cushitic, and then languages that are a combination of the two, right? And this is one of the oldest regions, right? That's where the proto, the Horn of Africa is where the proto um, Afro-Asiatic or Afro-Shemitic actually comes from. But then after the flood, right, that, that's when the re-migration, right, into what we call today Africa came about. You know what I mean? So basically we have Ethiopia, right, or the region, the Horn of Africa, before the Kush Horn of Africa region, before the deluge, right, of the land, some say the whole earth, but definitely these regions of the world, right, were were deluged, right? In the scriptural context, the, the deluge of the earth, was it the whole earth as people imagine? It's sufficient to say that the epicenter of the, how can we say, concentration, of the peoples on the earth was in this particular region, because this particular region, right, of the world, especially Ethiopia, the Rift, the Rift Valley is almost like when a woman gives birth, right? Like the parting of the Red Sea, the crossing of the water break. Yeah. So this is this is like the the the, the womb, so to speak, of humanity. You know, the womb of humanity. So even just a flooding of these lands, you see these three, the Horn of Africa, Arabia, and then as we go more over into the the east, you know, even the Hindus Kush regions, all that, right? That's the area we're focusing on right there. This is the epicenter right here. 
And this is also another good kind of um chart where you can see the Cushitic, you know, but they're not, they don't give you the, they'll say like Hebrew is Semitic and they'll say Amharic is Semitic. But the truth of the matter is that they are Afro-Semitic, right? And because they both are Afro-Asiatic. So they might want to drop that word Semitic, Shemitic, right? However, what they can't drop because of the evidence is too overwhelming is the Afro part, right? That's the part that they can't drop. The Afro, yeah, 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 the Afro. Asiatic family. So Hebrew, right, is a major member and a major player. Let's say it like that. A major member and a major player in the Afro-Asiatic family, in the Afro-Semitic, Afro-Semitic family. So Shalom Chavarim, Shalom. So number one proof that the biblical Israelites Right, that the biblical Israelites, number one proof, biblical Israelites, right, biblical Israelites were African, is the language. The language, without the language, we wouldn't have the Torah. Without the Torah, we wouldn't have the Bible, you know, and therefore, you know, that is the main, you know, that's the mainstay, that's the main proof right there, there, there. So here, 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 shalom, chabarim, shalom, here, 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 yes, I, Rastafari, I, and I.